Good morning, and welcome to the Catholic Community of Pleasanton. I'm Father Mark Wiesner, pastor here in Pleasanton, California. And wherever in the world you may be joining us today, whether you're a member of our community right here in Pleasanton, our extended community in other states and other countries, we welcome you and thank you for praying with us on this sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time, our last Ordinary Time Sunday for quite a while, because as you know, on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and we enter into the holy and wonderful season of Lent. Um, and happy Valentine's Day to you as well, if you celebrate that day. Uh, certainly, when we talk about our God, we're always talking about a God of love, so fitting enough on a Sunday to remember that as well. If this is your first time praying with us, we're very happy you're with us, and you will find on whatever platform you're watching, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or our own webpage, uh, links somewhere nearby, to my left, my right, above me, below me, somewhere, you'll find a couple of links. One has the readings for today, so you can follow along with the readings, and the other has all of the music, our worship aid, that we'll be singing today. So please take a moment and find those. Hopefully those will uh, facilitate your participation in Mass today. Um, I would like to hand over to our musicians who will warm us up, go over some of our music, Good morning. How are you guys? Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Thank Day. you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Uh, let's begin by warming up our hearts and our voices with the responsorial psalm that you'll find on page three of the worship aid. to the next page, you'll find a new song called Holy Spirit, Come Now. Let us go over the refrain together. Oh, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather on this holy day to hear the Lord speak to us in his word proclaimed, to encounter him in each other as the body of Christ on earth, and to receive him in his sacraments, let us call to mind our sins and remember the great love and mercy he shows us. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you. covered not. I said I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed, that will be proof for them. 
The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, happy Valentine's Day. Um, if this was not a Sunday, on the church calendar, we'd actually be keeping the memorial of Saints Cyril and Methodius. If you've never heard about Cyril and Methodius, look them up. You'll probably be uh, kind of impressed with what the two of them did in their lifetime. But of course, today, the uh, secular feast of love uh, dominates with St. Valentine's Day. And of course, we're also looking down the throat at Lent coming our way, right? I mean, barrel and tortoise is this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, the start of the holy season of Lent. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if somehow in the homily today, I could take all those things and wrap them together? Love and leprosy and, of course, Lent. Well, you add in President's Day tomorrow and it just sort of throws everything all awry, but even so... The gospel today is really worth taking some time with, really worth pondering because it's so beautiful and reveals so much to us of who our God is and who Christ is. Um, for everything that happens in the gospel, and there's a lot, at the center of the exchange between Jesus and the man is a touch. Touch something that's so important, so wonderful. Catholic theologian and philosopher John Donahue, he's an Irish Catholic guy, reminds us that with our eyes, we see the other as other, right? There's a, there's a distance there, a separation between us and others. We, we size people up. Our eyes remind us that we are separate from each other, that we are independent people. But touch, touch overcomes that boundary. Touch allows us to move from the anonymity of being individual people to being connected somehow. Touch is so beautiful and so important. I mean, yes, there is uh, the way that touch can be misused in, in abuse and things like that, this horrible defiguration of, of this beautiful gift that God has given us. But who among us also hasn't known the touch that heals the touch of compassion, the touch that brings comfort, whether it's uh, the arm of a loved one around you or the hand of someone across your face gently or so many different ways. One of the things that people who've lost a spouse tell me is one of the hardest parts is that loss of touch. We know how important touch is. And uh, I think maybe this year, we're in a slightly better position to understand the situation of the man with leprosy than we've ever been before. Because in a very real way, in our society for the last 11 months in the world, touch has become something that is somewhat taboo, even in our mass, right? Uh, there's no handshake of peace. There's no embrace. You're not holding hands for the Our Father. All these things we normally do, we don't do. We, we don't come near. We stand apart. We social distance, almost as though we are lepers of some kind to each other that we can't come near to one another. Maybe you've had the experience where someone in the last several weeks has held their hand out for you to shake, and you're like, ah, 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 no, 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 no. There's just something about us now that doesn't like that. I know that I had a very interesting experience when this first began back in March. As a priest, as an unmarried person, a celibate, I went about three months without anyone touching me in any way at all. No handshakes no embrace. And, and I got about six or eight weeks in, it was like, this is very weird that I've had no physical contact with anybody. Because normally, before Mass, after Mass, during the week, there's all kinds of handshakes and embraces and high fives and things going on, right? None of that. Finally, after three months, one of my friends worked up the courage to give me a hug. And it felt so good. It was like, okay, I, I'm human again. I'm human again. It makes such a difference. We can only imagine what the experience was like for that leper who, who knows how long he had gone without being touched by another person when Jesus compassionately, gently, 
with a very healing touch, touched him. It really is a pretty amazing story because, as I'm sure you know, Jesus, when do, doing that, blows through taboo is not a strong enough word. Every taboo, every superstition, every boundary that would have separated that man from the rest of society. As you know, leprosy, even to today, is something that what we hear about it can, can set us back on our heels. Uh, many years ago, I went and visited uh, Kenya at the invitation of the missionary passionists of Kenya. And me being who I am, my first time in Africa, it was a great adventure. Everything was exciting, whether we were going to visit mission churches way out beyond anywhere that, that tourists would ever go, whether we were at Lake Victoria, we're going on safari, we're going to go visit a hospital, we're going to go visit uh, their, their seminaries, whatever it was. It was like, this is awesome. Until the day came when they said to me, well, there's our leprosy clinic, let's go in, there's a patient in there. And I went, <laughs> there was this immediate response within me to leprosy and the stigma that accompanies it. I had to make the choice of will to go in, to get beyond my fear. But that fear is there for us when we hear that word. I mean, if you had a neighbor or a new neighbor moved in and you heard that they, oh, I don't know, maybe they were diagnosed with cancer or maybe they were sick with pneumonia, you would likely see what you could do for them. Let me make some chicken soup. Go over, is there anything I can do for you? Can I run errands for you? What, 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 what do you need? How can I help? But if the neighbor moved in next door and you heard they had COVID-19, you'd probably be far less likely to go knock on the door and say to them, what can I do for you? Because we know there's a fear to a disease we don't understand. And that's how it was with leprosy. In Jesus' time, as I'm sure you're aware, Leprosy included a wide variety of skin diseases, not just what we know as Hansen's disease, but anything even like psoriasis would be seen as a leprosy of sorts. And of course, the person who had that had to go to the priest. And it wasn't so much about medical diagnosis as the priest would determine a person's religious cleanliness, whether they were clean or unclean, worthy or unworthy to be part of society because whenever someone had that sort of thing in their life, it was believed to be from God as a punishment for sin in their life. So if you were diagnosed as a leper or having a skin disease, it was obvious you were unclean. You were not worthy to be part of God's people, God's holy people. And of course, we're talking about a society where the center of the society was religion, not economics like it is for us. And if you were found unworthy of that, unclean, you were cast out of it. And it was a horrible sentence to have. I mean, socially, you were cut off from your family, from your friends, from your church, from your community, from everyone. You had to wear torn up clothes and cry out, unclean, unclean, so people would stay away from you. Maybe you hung out with a few other lepers, but that was your experience socially. Physically, there was absolutely no cure for leprosy. So if you actually had leprosy, all you had to look forward to in your life was pain, suffering, disfigurement, possible dismemberment. Physically, things were not good for you. Psychologically, not only were you outcast and it would have anything to do with you, but in that time, you would have believed, you would have thought, that even God had turned against you and had given you this disease. Where do you go? Who do you turn to? Enter Jesus, right? The leper in this story is really something of a heroic figure. He comes to Jesus and essentially makes a profession of faith. You can heal me. You can do it if you want to. And... Jesus, moved with compassion, moved with pity, does it. He touches the man. And that's amazing. And it's deliberate. Because we know from other stories in the scriptures that Jesus does not have to touch to heal someone. He can simply say it and it happens. There are stories where he heals people who are miles and miles away from him with just a word but he chooses 
to touch the man. Not only is the man clean, but he sends him to the priest to be restored to his community. It's really a phenomenal story about how Jesus reaches out to touch those who society sees as unclean, who see themselves as unclean, unworthy, those who are outcast, those who others fear. Christ reaches out to touch. Beautiful and powerful. So where does that leave us? Well, there's an easy homily here and there's a hard homily here. The easy homily is this one. That while leprosy may not exist in our society per se today, there are still people who suffer the effects as though they were lepers. I mean, for example, there are people who live alone, the elderly, who feel isolated, who feel alone, who, who aren't just alone, but who are lonely. And that has very much been accentuated by the pandemic we've had where you can't go visit each other, where the things we might normally do to fill our days and connect with one another are cut off from us. And that is particularly difficult for those who live alone and those who are elderly. They feel isolated from society and by themselves, even in the midst of all the social media platforms and ways we have of communicating with each other, they miss that human contact. They miss knowing that people are thinking of them. Not to mention those people who maybe we isolate by our own choice. I'm not going to bother with that person. That person's not worth my time. I don't like that individual. Here's an annoying classmate. Here's a difficult neighbor. Here's a relative I don't want to spend time with that we isolate and make lepers in our own life. Those are people whom we need to stretch out our hand to touch. It may be a stretch to do it too, because some people are so difficult, so difficult. But as followers of Christ, who reveals to us a God that loves all and reaches out to touch even the untouchable, that's our example. And that's the easy homily, to be people who reach out in love and compassion to try to do good for others, right? The hard homily, I think, is to try to identify, maybe not identify, we might be aware, but to deal with the leprosy in our own life, our own sinfulness, those things that we know and are aware of that make us unclean before God, unworthy of God. Not that God rejects us, but we know God wants better for us and needs us to do better. That's what Lent is all about, right? That's what's coming up very soon. Lent is about looking at those places in our life where we struggle, where we are unworthy, where we need to be made clean. You know, on Ash Wednesday, a bazillion people are going to come to church. It's uh, possibly the most popular day on the church calendar, even though it's not a holy day of obligation, but we're giving something away, blessed ashes. And people come to get that smudge on their forehead for whatever reason that may be. The ashes, of course, represent repentance, that we're repenting from our sin. There's nothing particularly magic about them if you get ashes. What gives the ash purpose is if you are truly ready to repent. So you might have noticed in the gospel reading that Jesus sends the man to the priests, but he says to him, don't tell anybody what I've done. Of course, the man goes off and tells everybody, and I don't blame him. If I was suddenly touched and clean, I'd probably do the same thing. But the reason why Jesus doesn't want the man going off and, and talking all about it is that for some reason, people like the fantastic. They like the miracle. They like the show. They like the smudge. But Jesus' message, his thesis sentence in the Gospel of Mark is, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's a lot more work than watching something magnificent happen and feeling special because you get ashes. The ashes only make sense if we follow Jesus' thesis sentence and repent. Do the work of turning away from any sort of wrong values we may possess, any sort of addiction, any sort of abuse, any sort of selfishness, any sort of all those things that are not 
of the gospel. I mean, most people right now are getting ready to give something up for Lent. Probably something they've given up for many years in a row, right? Coke or coffee or chocolate or alcohol or whatever that is that I give up for 40 days only to return to it at Easter all the more gluttonousy, more chocolate, more, right? That's what we do. But I tell people, if you really want to get into Lent, if you actually want to impress God, there's only one thing you need to give up for Lent. Give up sin. Because that's what it's about. It's not about whether we can make it 40 days without this or that. It's about repenting, letting our hearts be changed. That's what makes the smudge meaningful, that we are sorry for what we've done. Many years ago, I had someone come to me in tears in my office, and they were so concerned that God could not love them, could not reach out to them because of all his words, the dark things I have done. It was my privilege to assure him that God does. Those who are seen as unworthy and those who see themselves as unworthy, God still in his love reaches out to touch, to heal, to be made whole, to restore us fully to the body of Christ. Maybe it's not that hard. Love, leprosy, Lent, when seen in the specter of what God is doing for us, it all makes sense. We are loved into the body of Christ. My brothers and sisters, Today, we have um, the joy of celebrating the Sacrament of Confirmation with a member of the Body of Christ. Um, James is a member of the United States Army and will soon be deployed. And so our bishop has given us permission to celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation with him before his deployment. So at this time, I'd like to call forward James and his sponsor, Chuck, please. How are you doing? Well, Bishop. Good, I'm good, thank you. I'm so excited to celebrate this with you today. James, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so before you celebrate confirmation, I ask you to renew the profession of faith you made in baptism or your parents and godparents made in union with the whole church. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his empty works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear brother for confirmation, by your baptism, you have been born again in Christ, and you have become a member of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be a witness to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be an active member of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. And so, my dear friends, both those present here with us now and those joining us on our webcast, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on James to strengthen him with his gifts and anoint him to be like, more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, 
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your Son from sin and gave him new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon him to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. James the Greater, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with your spirit. And together, let us welcome James and congratulate him upon his confirmation. Congratulations. <laughs> Look at the camera. We know that his mother and his brother, who is John, so James and John, the sons of thunder in their household, <laughs> as well as his fiance and other relatives, even from as far away as Croatia, are watching today. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you for sharing the gift of James with us. Uh, know that we will keep you in prayer for your safety as you are deployed. Thank so you. God bless you. Thank you very much. You. Have a seat. And at this time, I'd like to invite forward those who are preparing to receive sacraments come Easter. And my dear sister, we send you forward to reflect more deeply upon the word of God that you've heard proclaimed this day, the sacrament that you've seen celebrated. Know that our prayers go with you, and we eagerly await the day when we celebrate the sacraments with you, and you join us in full communion around the altar of the Lord. Go now in peace. Wherever you may be, I invite you to please stand as we bring before God our prayers this day. My friends, our Lord Jesus Christ welcomed the outcast, touched the untouchable, loved the unlovable. Let us reach out in prayer toward those whom we often fail to remember. For the members of the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation in these divisive times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For James, confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that he gives witness to Christ by a life built on faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our men and women in the military whose long deployments keep them from family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, local and afar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alone or forgotten, for the seriously ill, the homebound and the hospitalized, for the elderly and all who live alone. We pray for those who are ill, suffering from the pandemic, those who suffer from natural disasters, those who struggle with long-term and terminal illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our faithful departed, for those who have died recently and for all who mourn them for those who have died from COVID-19 or from natural disasters, and for those who have died alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of all praying with us today and for the community of the Catholic community of Pleasanton for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, hear the prayers your people bring you this day. Grant us all things for your glory and our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to join me now in praying our act of spiritual communion. I will lead it and invite you to simply repeat after me. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. There are some announcements today with Lent coming on. There's just some information I want to make sure you all have. First of all, Ash Wednesday. Um, yeah, how do we do that this year, right? First time doing Ash Wednesday in a pandemic with a bazillion people coming, right? So um, how do we do this? So here's what we're going to do this year to try to make it work. We will have three Masses this year, 8.30 a.m. at St. Augustine, 12.10 webcast here at St. Elizabeth Seton, and 6 o'clock p.m. St. Augustine. Both the Masses at St. Augustine, the 8.30 a.m. and the 6 o'clock p.m., will be in-person Masses. We can have up to 200 people attend Mass. So watch that because in order to get in for 8.30 morning Mass or 6 o'clock p.m. Mass on Ash Wednesday, you'll need to make a reservation. 
and the link for making a reservation will be on our website this afternoon. It'll probably go out in a flock note as well. So that will be available too. So watch for that. If you'd like to actually come attend Mass to receive ashes and communion on Ash Wednesdays, we start Lent. Um, 8.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the evening, uh, you will need to make a reservation for that. I do want to point out, though, that the dispensation from Mass still stays in place. And as I mentioned, Ash Wednesday is not a holy day of obligation. So there's no obligation on you to come. But if you would like to, we're going to make that available to you. And then 12.10 will be a webcast Mass only. Now, after each of those Masses, after the 8.30, the 12.10, and the 6 o'clock, in whatever church those are happening at, after those Masses, there will be the opportunity to come for walk-through ashes and communion. We'll have both of those going on that day. So again, 8.30 in the morning, probably roughly about 9.20, 9.30, we'll have walk-through ashes and communion at St. Augustine Church. 12.10 Mass here, followed by probably 1 o'clock, right? Um, walk through Ashes and Communion here, and then 6 o'clock Mass in the evening at St. Augustine, probably around 7 o'clock, walk through Communion and Ashes at St. Augustine. So there will be an opportunity for you to come and receive Ashes and Communion, even if you don't uh, make a reservation and attend one of those Masses. I hope that's all clear. Uh, if it's not, again, it will be on our website and in an email to you, flock note to you, um, later today. Also wanted to invite you to take an opportunity that we're offering this year to enrich your Lenten experience and perhaps have a greater celebration of Easter. Our small faith sharing groups are opening themselves up to welcome new members over the six weeks of Lent. Uh, the small faith sharing groups will meet once a week via Zoom. Um, there's material that you'll be reading in preparation and then sort of sharing how you see that material that we're talking about um, reflected in your own life as a person of faith, how you live that. In all honesty, the church is known forever that the way people grow in faith is by sharing their faith. It's why you see us dismiss people here every Sunday. Essentially, those who are preparing to become Catholics, the way they grow in their faith is by getting together every week and sharing it. It's, it's how we grow. It's how we learn. Um, and if you'd like to deepen your faith this length and experience, we invite you to please join a small faith sharing group. How do you do that? Online, of course. There's a sign-up sheet on our website, catholicsofpleasant.org. So I guess almost if you're anywhere in the world, you could join us for a small faith sharing group this Lent. So take a look at that. Um, rice bowls are available. We will have them in the vestibule of St. Augustine Church. They will also be present today here at St. Elizabeth Seton as you do walk through communion. Um, I believe they made it over. So those are there for you to pick up. If you, if you do the practice of the rice bowl where you eat a simpler meal during Lent, and then the money you save you place in the rice bowl, bring that back to us during Holy Week, and then all that money we collect goes to Catholic Relief Services for their work in trying to alleviate hunger around the world. Um, as always, we're very grateful for your financial support of the parish during these difficult days. Since the pandemic started, you guys have been amazing in your financial support of the parish, and we're very grateful for that. If you are financially stable, we appreciate your, your generosity, your good stewardship um, tremendously. Uh, as many of you have been doing, you're mailing in a donation, you're dropping it off at the rectory, or of course, uh, the same place today where you found the readings and the music for today, there's another link that will take you to um, actually three different possible ways to give electronically, to give online. So thank you so much for your ongoing support of the parish. And then as you can sort of tell, there's a lot going on and things sort of change quickly some days depending on what the government says or the county says or the diocese says. So I just invite you to make a regular practice of stopping by our webpage. We try to keep that updated as things change, as we figure out how we're going to do what we need to do this year. So catholicsofpleasant.org, take a look at that. Again, I do want to congratulate James once more on uh, being confirmed. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, sacrament. So thank you for letting us celebrate that with you today. We will certainly be keeping you in prayer as you're deployed and trained. And wherever it is you're going, know that our prayers go with you. And thank you again to his family for being with us. Uh, make sure you call him today or FaceTime him today. and congratulate him and embarrass him and all those things that, that families do for one another. So again, congratulations, James. And uh, wherever you may be in the world, whether you're local or national or in another country, again, thank you for being with us. Please know you're always welcome to join us in anything we're doing here at the Catholic Community of Pleasanton. And the Lord is with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. God our Father, complete the work you have begun and keep the gifts of your Holy Spirit active in the hearts of your people. Make them ready to live his gospel and eager to do his will. 
May they never be ashamed to proclaim to all the world Christ crucified, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessed Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.